Welcome to Board Games Anonymous, the podcast of board gamers and the insane fun we have at the table together. This is Chris. And this is Anthony. And we are bringing you BGA's 2020 Most Anticipated Games. Anthony, are you anticipating these games as much as I am? Uh, yeah. To the detriment of all that is good and holy in my wallet. <laughs> I'm like... Like I sit down, we do our resolutions last week. I'm like, I'm going to do a 10 by 10. I'm going to play stuff I haven't played. I'm going to spend less money. And then every year, the next episode we do is the most anticipated games of the year. And I'm like, why is why do we do it in this order? <laughs> we should flip it around. It's like I've already spent a hundred. <laughs> Yes, it is our most anticipated games from 2020. This upcoming year, there's some great Kickstars that are coming up, not to mention some amazing expansions and re-releases, so many so that that's going to be the main crux of our episode this week because we want to bring you up to date on everything you should be looking for on Kickstarter at the upcoming conventions and games that are hitting your table. And now more than ever, these games are coming out quick, and they're disappearing from the market even quicker. Yeah, it's crazy how fast stuff pops up, disappears, comes in, drops out. And as we usually do, like because we went through the list last week of stuff that we anticipated for 2019, we missed probably half the games we ended up liking for the year because what we know at the beginning of the year is only a fraction of what's actually going to come out this year. So this is already a big list, so have fun. <laughs> And this is not mentioning all of the surprises that usually come out at the conventions throughout the year, but stick with us as the year goes on. We'll let you know about all those great games that pop up and inside secrets that we hear along the way. So, Anthony, before we get into all of that kind of fun stuff, let's get into what our listeners are talking about. What's our question of the week? Yeah, question of the week this week. Uh, last week, we shared our resolutions for 2020. So I asked the listeners, what are your resolutions for 2020? And it was a general theme, and it tends to be every year, but there's some interesting stuff in here. Uh, so Aaron said, he wants to work through a shelf of shame. I'm with you. Try to buy less games. I'm with you. Dive deeper into more games I already have. Yep. <laughs> whether I do those things, whether hopefully, Aaron, you can achieve it. I'm always hesitant whether I'm going to pull it off or not. Uh, David says he's going to attempt to do a 2 by 20 which is trying to play 20 new-to-him games twice. Even if the first play is just moving the bits around while reading the rule book and learning the game. Um, I think that's a, a valiant effort. I think a lot of people only play games once just to check them off the list. It's kind of a cool idea to commit to playing every game at least twice. Um, I know I try to do that since we talk about them here. doesn't always happen. And try to tell you guys when it doesn't happen. because Certain games are not amenable to multiple plays. CT Henry says to buy fewer games, only ones that have a possibility to break into his top 10. And he wants to buy less than 50 and play more than 50. So I guess a net positive gain in terms of his shelf of shame. Um, uh, David mentions last year was about playing as many games as he could and expanding his knowledge of games. This year is about enjoying the games he already likes and developing more strategy and skill with those games. Uh, Timothy mentions he wants to paint all of his miniatures. And I'd, I'd be with you, man, but I got thousands of the darn things, so it's not happening. Um <laughs> And Tim mentioned a cool thing that I've seen floating around. A bunch of people posted this actually in December. He got the scratch poster for the BGG Top 100. And so if you haven't seen this, it's a poster and you scratch off when you've played each of the games in the Top 100 games of all time as of, I think, like August maybe is the one he posted here um, because obviously that changes pretty frequently. But then as you scratch them off, you get to see the different icons for each of those games. So you have this poster that shows what you've done out of like quote unquote, the best games of all time. So that's a pretty cool idea as well. But yeah, I think play more games, buy less games and get the old stuff back out is kind of the general consensus from most people. And that's more or less what I hope to get done this year as well. So good luck to all of you because I need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for me this year, we talked about our resolutions for last episode, but recently I moved and because I moved, I had to pack up and rearrange and in particular, my board game collection had gotten a little unwieldy, <laughs> to say the least. So what I did was reorganize it alphabetically this time, which seems to be the smarter thing to do than what I was doing, which was arranging games based on how much I wanted to play them with the ones I didn't really want to play that much towards the end. 
But this way I can actually find games. So when somebody asks me to play a game that I really haven't wanted to play for quite some time, it's not going to be the hectic, you know, search and search and search as it was before. So I, I think I'm going to see about slimming down the collection, looking to pull out the fine vintages of the game collection and see what's great because in the end, as you mentioned, Anthony, you can only play so much throughout the year and some games deserve a lot more love out there. All right. So if you'd like to join the conversation, we would really love to hear from you, especially your resolutions for 2020 and what games you're looking to get this upcoming year. So please find us on BoardGamersAnonymous.com, our guild on Board Game Geek. Everywhere social media happens to be, Facebook and Twitter especially, there's a lot of conversations going on there. We have a YouTube channel. If you haven't been there, please subscribe. We would love to have your subscriptions so this way we can pop up new videos for you. And we are always putting new content on our Patreon account, patreon.com slash BGA. There is more and more episodes up there and more content and more ways to connect with us. So please consider supporting us there. All right, Anthony, so that's everything that's going on with our listeners. Let's get on to the episode. So for the episode this week, we are talking about our most anticipated games. So basically, it's a giant acquisition disorder with a little, you know, feature review kind of rolled into one. So, Anthony, you have a ridiculous list for us. <laughs> you know, what do you overall, you're looking at the 2020 anticipated games. As we said, there's going to be some ones that pop up. There's going to be some that just never come out. What's your thoughts about 2020 so far? I don't know. It's tough. Like, and I'm digging through all of this and there's a lot of miniatures games. There's a lot of stuff announced for Kickstarter, which I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm not really interested in anymore. Like before the show, you mentioned the new Marvel miniatures chibi thing from Simon. I did. And I've, and I told you like five years ago, that would have cost me 200 bucks. And this year I'm like, I don't care. I don't. And, you know, maybe I'll change my mind, but I don't think I will this time. I really don't, because I have so many miniatures games in my closet that just don't see the table ever. But, but do you have a chibi Thanos with a chibi Infinity Gauntlet? No, I mean, it's cute, but can I just buy that? <laughs> I just want to buy that. I don't want to buy the other $250 of the stuff. Just that. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, there's a lot of good stuff coming out. Uh, it's not all in this list, obviously. And then, like you mentioned earlier, there's hundreds of games we don't even know about yet that haven't been announced yet. In fact, at least a dozen of these games on here from both sides of the list were announced in the last like two weeks. So they're already being announced. By the time you hear this episode, there might even be more <laughs> that get announced here at the beginning of the year. So it, it's looking to be yet another packed year. Um, one thing I did notice that was pretty interesting is... I went through and I made a giant list and then I split it up by new games and expansions slash re-releases. Mm -hmm. And the second least, the second list was longer. So wow, it's crazy. Yeah. Not a lot of new, new stuff. All right. Well, before we get into those expansions, let's get into the new, new stuff. What do you have for us, Anthony? All right. New, new stuff. Number one, this is a game I didn't know about until PAX and uh, I didn't go to PAX, but I saw pictures from PAX and it is Oath Chronicles of Empire and Exile. Uh, it's the new game from Cole Worley and publisher Leader Games. And I don't know, Root's one of my favorite games. And this has the same aesthetic, same artwork from Kyle Ferrin. Um, the twist in this game, or I guess the, the spin on it, is that it's not a legacy game, but what you do in one game will carry through to the next game to the point where you could have one group of players that plays the game. It changes the game state to a point where the next group of players is playing a different game than the last group did. Like huh. you could have you could sit and play this game solo all weekend, go through three or four games and just get it to a point where you're comfortable. like, oh, this is the setup I want to have for my game day on Wednesday. And that's what you bring to, to game night. I don't know how it's going to work. Um, they seem very proud of the fact that there's no like scripting. There's no predetermined endpoints. There's no apps. There's no other production gimmicks. There's no ripping up cards or anything. It's just this clever spin on like a. Uh, immersive kind of emerging game system that I haven't heard of before. I guess we'll see how it plays out because a lot of the times people describe these things and you know, who knows, but it's got those cool whirly things, area majority area movement um, and cute little, you know, animal artwork. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I mean, root is such a, an established modern day classic. So I think this one's definitely gonna see table time. 
All right, yeah, so that one's huge for me. Uh, next one up is actually a game that a select few people got a hand on, uh, including myself at Gen Con, because they had like pre-production white box copies of a GNC. This is a new one from Carl Chudik uh, and his Mahdi Games. And the goal of the game is you're kind of adventuring through a couple hundred different islands in the Aegean Sea and trying to accomplish various different things. And like a lot of Carl Chudik games, cards have multiple uses. There are several different decks of cards, um, and every single card in the game is unique with unique text. So what I bought when I got this was just a big brick of cards. I obviously haven't played the final version of the game, uh, but I've gotten through this introductory kind of, um, you know, it I guess almost prototype level, but a little bit more than a prototype. And it's really interesting. And it's, I don't know where it fits in terms of his other games, but I'm really interested to see what the final um, uh, product looks like. Well, I love Carl Chudik and, uh, you know, his games have been a mainstay, at least in my collection. So yeah, this looks like something that I uh, might be interested in. Yep. All right. So I know this next one you're interested in, if nothing else, because we're both wondering if it's ever actually going to come out, right? <laughs> Tang Garden. Yeah. Tang Garden was a Kickstarter. I backed a while ago, mostly, to be honest, just because the production was fantastic. And the Kickstarter did a really nice job of showing some of the gameplay. It seemed to be a little bit on the lighter side, but I can't mind that when they look like they were doing such a good job. But this was supposed to be released a long time ago, my friend. Yeah, January of 2019 was their original ship date. And I think the Kickstarter was almost a full year before that. So they are a year late and counting. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I know. It's. I mean, it's an established company, so they'll probably release it. But when? Who knows? <laughs> All right. Next up on the list is my acquisition disorder from last week, The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine. This was a super interesting, unique take on trick taking a cooperative style of game that is coming from cosmos um, in english here in the spring i think so this is definitely one i'm looking forward to yeah i really like the artwork here i mean anything in space is always something that's going to get my interest up here and this looks to be something interesting something very unique and uh, cosmos always does a really great job of bringing their games at a quite reasonable uh, price point absolutely all right next one up is legacies this was a Kickstarter that ran not too long ago uh, from Brooks Spun Games. Jason Brooks is the designer. And this was actually pointed out to me by a friend who backed it. I did not back it myself, but I am looking forward to playing it when he gets it in. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Uh, it is a game in which you are this famous individual uh, in the 19th century, and you were trying to build a legacy for your family. So you're making relationships, you're investing, you're trying to collect various things that you can pass on to future generations. And so the game kind of evolves throughout as you build all these things up and ideally leave the best legacy for you know the future generations of your family. It goes over the course. It's not just that character, however. It is over the course of several centuries as the family kind of evolves and builds up. So you can see how effective the legacy was, um, you know, those initial actions you took and then subsequently built on how did it work out. It's just a cool idea, and I'm interested to see how it plays out. Uh, it's a Kickstarter. It's from a relatively new designer and don't know a whole bunch more about it, but it's a cool idea. It looks interesting, has a lot of great production and lots of upgrades from the Kickstarter. Yeah. What I heard about this game was it was very crunchy, a, a very high level weight game. And I just want to know how I can meet your friend Ryan, because I'd really like to play this if that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> you have to head out to Pittsburgh, man. All right. Next one on the list is the newest from Eric Lang. It's in his, whatever they're calling this trilogy, the God series, the Pantheon series, whatever it is, we have Ankh gods of Egypt. So, it's the follow-up to Rising Sun and Blood Rage. We still don't know a ton about this game in terms of mechanisms and how it actually plays, but it's Eric Lang. He designed it by himself, so they're not just slapping his name on a box. It's Adrian Smith doing the artwork again, and it is of the same pedigree of what we saw in Rising Sun and Blood Rage, two of the best dudes on a map game ever made. So I'm definitely interested in this, regardless of what it turns out to be. <laughs> so... I heard a lot of people referring to this as a trilogy, as you mentioned. It's it's basically super expensive miniatures on a board and, and bringing in monsters and gods to kind of fight alongside them. So, yeah, as you mentioned, he nailed the first two. So why not a third? 
I guess unless you feel like you have as much miniatures as you could possibly have in one lifetime, but that's not us. So we'll probably back this. A hundred percent. All right. So next up on the list is another Egyptian themed game. This one, however, coming more on the crunchy Euro end of things from Daniel Tashini and David Turchi uh, from Board and Dice Games. Tekenu, Obelistic of the Sun. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Someone will let me know. Daniel Tashini continues his tradition of impossible to pronounce <laughs> games that start with the letter T. So thanks for that. Just just loving it. So when I spoke to Boards and Dice at Gen Con this year, they mentioned that Tashini would have a new game out ideally every year with them. And this is his game for 2020. Therefore, I'm instantly enamored with it, interested in it, want to know what's going on. It has dice that are used for action selection. It has this central obelisk idea that will create different parts of the board. Some will be sunny, some will be shaded, some will be dark, and the actions will change accordingly. There's a very detailed rundown of the mechanics and how the game plays out on BGG if you want to go and check it out. But suffice it to say, it's a new Tashini game. Turchi's involved for the solo side of things. It's coming from boards and dice, so I'm sure it's going to be a decently heavy, at least Teotihuacan weight game. So I'm in regardless. Well, I'm looking forward to mispronouncing this name in future reviews. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, this this looks great. It looks like it has some sort of uh, dice tower involved with it. Uh, I'm not sure how that will actually play out, but at least in the prototype copy, it looks interesting. And obviously, great pedigree from both of these gentlemen. Next up on the list actually came out at Essen in uh, 2019. It's On the Origin of Species. And... Honestly, this one got my attention because of the theme alone. I just, I like these games that are based on science or historical texts or historical figures that aren't necessarily like beaten into our heads repeatedly over and over again, like the same themes. Uh, So it seems interesting. It's a little on the light side. It's like a two weight game. And I wish it was a little bit heavier because I feel like you could do something really interesting. If not with On the Origin of Species and the whole idea of evolution, just the journey of Charles Darwin in writing that. Right. Mm -hmm. But if nothing else, I'm interested because of the theme and what you're going to get out of this. It might end up on the light shelf for me, but it's on its way. Uh, It was a Kickstarter and I did back this one. Yeah, it looks really nice. And I think this is one of those games that is going to have a very big impact because of the artwork and because, as you mentioned, the scientific value of this game, maybe in the classroom, you know, as a teaching tool for students. Obviously, more and more these days, people are doubting science, and that's kind of frightening, especially amongst young people. So it'd be nice to engage them in scientific fact and theory these days. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's it's a cool idea. So going from there, pure science, to as far from that as you can get, pure science fiction, we have Transhumanity. Uh, this is the new game from Mind Clash Games, and I'm just going to read you the short description because, as usual with Mind Clash Games, it sounds insane. So there's an event called The Leap. Happens in a blink of an eye, but changes mankind's future forever. Earth is mysteriously torn from its orbit by an unknown force. The sun disappears from the sky, and a scarlet dwarf star takes its place. No one knows how or why, but one thing seems certain is an act of a superior intelligence with an unknown origin and intention. So it's a kind of outside your own head uh, setup, similar to like Anachrony, where it's just accept it some far future situation you just got to go with it it's going to be dripping at least with visual theme in terms of how the game is presented if i know anything about these guys it is actually based on a science fiction novel so they're not completely pulling this one out of nowhere um and it's actually a story-driven cooperative campaign game so they haven't done that before to my knowledge there's a little bit of a cooperative element in cerebria but that's more of a team game So I don't know what this is going to be, but it's Mind Clash and I've liked everything they've done. So I'm excited to see what it is, if nothing else. Yeah, me too. I'm really interested in the theme here, although the mechanics here and after Cerebria, I'm a little kind of burnt from their games, even though they're amazingly imaginative. All right. So moving on back to science science, we have Rocket Man or Rocket Men, I should say, from Martin Wallace. This one's being published by Phalanx, who usually does war games. Um, This doesn't appear to be in the war game category, however. It's more of a card drafting, deck building kind of space science exploration game. And these games really, like, they tend to suck me in. Like, Space Core was one of my favorite games of last year. Leaving Earth is one of my favorite games of all time. 
And so this alone by itself with what little information I have, I'm really excited about. I, I want to learn more, of course, but Martin Wallace has a history of being able to take card driven play and just make it interesting and unique in special different ways. Don't know enough about the game to say whether it's going to be ideal for me, but I'll probably pick it up anyways because it hit, checks a lot of the boxes for me. Yeah, from the board alone, you get a sense of picking cards out from a market and obviously different upgrades for your ship in order to do exploration. And I guess at least once again, from these kind of photos, we're looking at at least a four player game, which I think is optimal for most Euro games. And it's it's a Wallace game. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about playing this one too. All right. Next up on the game list is the newest from Stefan Feld. This is kind of a cheat because it's not been officially announced. There's no final title for it. It's just a prototype title and we don't know when it's coming out, but it is listed on BGG as a 2020 game. He has released a game all but one year since he started making board games. It's probably coming out at Essen. So we're just going to put it on here because automatically I have to get this right. Um, it's called Strife and Manager, but that's probably not the final name because he has specifically said that all of his prototypes are named something manager. And the <laughs> Strifen is stripes in German, and the core mechanic of the game is that you have these different strips of cardboard that have different types of actions on them, and you will be putting them together throughout the game to generate actions and basically build your engine to be as efficient as you can. That's about as much as I know about this. It's stuff on Feld, though, so those of you who love him, yay, and those of you who don't, eh, it's fine. <laughs> it's uh, going to be on my shelf, though. Yeah, I love Stefan Feld, and they talked about him having three upcoming releases, so anything of his is always welcome at my table. Absolutely. All right, next one on the list is actually coming out right now. Uh, I just got the shipping notification for Isle of Cats. Um, it'll be here in a couple days. So this is a new game from Frank West, who did City of Kings, which was a massive, sprawling, adventure-style game with some unique twists to it that... I personally never got a chance to play, but a lot of people who I know like that type of game were enamored with. That wasn't my type of game. This, however, looked very interesting to me. It's a more of a Euro style puzzle game, and it's got polyominoes that are cats. <laughs> and these are like fantasy cats, so some have horns, some have crystals, some have whatever. But the idea of it is, is that you're trying to rescue cats from the Isle of Cats before the evil Lord something or another arrives i don't know why he wants to get these cats but you're trying to save them it just looks so cool and unique and different and i'm not even a cat person but just the way this was presented and just kind of a, an interesting fantasy twist um i could not help myself so i have a feeling this is the kind of game that if the price is right for people at conventions and whatnot it'll fly off the shelves this game looks ridiculous like yeah it does <laughs> super super ridiculous polyomino cat pieces doing weird strange things on a ship because reasons because you've got to fit them all on the ship you're trying to save uh, them from the island it makes sense oh it does not make sense oh it my god doesn't matter it's polyominoes and it's uh, cats and it's bright and it's cool oh uh, no <laughs> no this is like the cats movie all over again people i'm just warning you right now okay <laughs> that is a low bar and i don't <laughs> all right all right you look at the pictures and we'll, we'll let the listeners decide yeah well fortunately i'm getting this this week and i can play it and let everybody know if it is in fact the movie cats or something else that's good with cats because i can't <laughs> think of anything <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on, moving on. This is a game I know we both like and are both excited to see and get finally in our hands, and that is Smartphone Inc. Yes, sir. Um, play this one at PAX in 2018, and it was absolutely 100% not available anywhere until hopefully very soon. There was a Kickstarter last year. So it is coming from Arcane Wonders, but the Kickstarter was through Cosmodrome directly, and I believe that's where I'm getting my copy. Did you end up back in this? I didn't, and I regret not backing it just because I had such a good time with it at PAX Unplugged. And the Kickstarter, once again, it was just a little bit too high for me. And I think that's just what Kickstarter is becoming to be, is that there's a high premium on all these games. And it's it's becoming harder and harder to justify. But Smartphone is a great game. So if you haven't backed it, 
I highly recommend sitting down with a, a good friend who's backed it somewhere. Online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like in terms of like the gameplay, if you don't remember our discussion of it before, it's an economic euro, 100 percent. But it's got a unique um, action selection mechanism where you have these different boards that you just how you place them will determine which um, actions are available to you. So what's visible is what you can do. And the different actions allow you to research technologies, develop your factory, build up a network, outprice your competitors, because it is an economic euro. End of the day, you're trying to be the most successful smartphone company in the world. And yeah, it doesn't look like much at first. Like we were both kind of eh when we sat down to play it, but it does it all really well. It really does. Okay. Next up on the list here is the Grand Carnival, uh, designed by Rob Kramer. Uh, publisher is Uproarious Games. This is another uh, polyomino style game, so you can you can take a nap, Chris. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cute. It's a light game. It's about a big carnival. You're trying to build these different plots, and then on those plots, you're going to place not only the people attending the carnival, but the different rides and attractions that they're going to see. So it doesn't look like it's going to be the heaviest game in the world, but it's cute it's quick it's probably family friendly and i'm excited for it yeah i mean i i like patchwork and this this seems to be patchwork weight patchwork art style so to speak at least as, as the level's concerned and it seems to be uh, a game that won't overstay its welcome but will be fun and interesting so yeah i'll be i'll look forward to this one all right uh next on the list is 1861 1867 so Guess what, guys? One of us plays 18xx games now. Oh, no. It's not <laughs> this on guy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it, man. They're good. Uh, so this was on Kickstarter last year. And 1861 is an old game from like 2006. But this brings it back and combines it with 1867. So 61 is Russia. 67 is Canada. And the difference here, if you know anything about 18xx, is that in this game, you'll have multiple minor companies that go up for auction every round and these can be merged or converted into major corporations the major corporations are like the ones you end up running that actually produce things and help you generate revenue and that's how you win the game um it also has like a non-player uh government railway which is always interesting in games like this because there's just something in there messing with everybody equally <laughs> and ideally less you than someone else so i'm excited for this i've only played two 18xx games now um 1830 and 1846 played 46 a couple times but there's a few more on the docket that i'm excited to get played and so hopefully by the time this one arrives i'll have played a few others yeah <laughs> and that is all <laughs> yeah good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> good stuff man it's fun all right next up a little more um in the middle range of things is venice this is the Spiritual sequel to Ragusa, which came from Brain Crack Games earlier this year, um, designed by Andre Novak and David Turchi again on the list. This one seems a little bit heavier, a little bit longer, not a lot, but a little bit more than what we saw with Ragusa, which was a very light, very quick game. And in this one, you are traversing the canals of Venice and trying to build up the skills of your different assistants and generate different resources and basically complete um, like a pickup and deliver style circuit of the city to generate points as effectively as you can. So there's like a suspicion element to it based on, you know, how many actions you take and where you take them. So you have to kind of be careful of how you manage things. But it, it looks interesting. It's got the same 16th century European theme, but in a new kind of package. It's prettier by far than a lot of games in this genre. Um, but also has some unique elements to it. So looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this too. It looks great. And as you mentioned, it's a an interesting kind of takeoff of like almost like a pick up and deliver game. So yeah, this looks great. All right. And then last on the list here, for which we have no information, but you know, after the year Stonemeyer had in 2019, we have to mention that they have two new games coming out. The first, codename Sand, that's not the actual title. He, he codenames all his games is coming out probably in the first half of the year based on his production schedule. And then Cape looks like it's coming out in the second half of the year. Not a lot of information about either of these, but after the huge success of Wingspan and Tapestry, it was also a big success, even if it wasn't, you know, the game we were hoping it to be, at least financially, it was a big success. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how both of these perform in 2020. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to this too. And I, I know one of the other ex, uh, expansions, updates that's coming up is an expansion for Tapestry. And and if I'm looking forward to something from uh, Stonemaier Games, that's probably going to be it. Although, as you mentioned, since everything's codenamed, it, there could be a great game just kind of waiting for us in the wings. So, Anthony, out of all of these new games, is there one game here in particular that you're most anticipating for the upcoming year? Uh, probably the new Tashini game. Um, the sure. Obelisk of the Sun looks really interesting. And it's got his dice, but just kind of a, an extra special spin on it. Uh, so that's probably my most anticipated this year. Ankh might be up there too, but I'm not. I'm going to hold my breath on that actually shipping in 2020. Yeah, same for me. I think Ankh might ship much later, but I also think that it might be a good time for him too because he ran this system twice and maybe this is the final perfection of the system, so to speak. But I guess for 2020, if I can cross my fingers and look forward to something, Tang Garden was a Kickstarter that I backed, as we mentioned before, but I think it's a game that's going to have some real table presence and some table time out there because I think that they did something really smart with merging, you know, really high quality production without the high cost that some games are coming in. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one, too. All right, Anthony, what about expansions and re-releases? All right. So I'm going to keep this quick because, like I said, this list was longer than the first list. And, you know, we don't have all night to go through all these. Um, but we've also talked about most of these already because we know they're coming. So first on the list is Gugong Panjun. This is the first expansion for Gugong. Comes with four new modules. Um, seems like a few good tweaks to some parts of that game that got a little stale. And I'm excited for it because Gugong kind of hit my table more than I expected in 2019. I'm not excited for it. Gugong was kind of boring. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, at each their own. What are you going to do? Um, the, <laughs> <laughs> the third Egyptian game on the list, Kemet Blood and Sand. This is Kemet 2.0, basically. They just released 1.5 rules. And then lo and behold, like three weeks later, they're like, actually, there's a new version coming in 2020. So yay. Uh, for me, you know, I've been talking about Kemet, at least the first edition, especially the map as being super problematic mm -hmm. and a lot of the rules not being streamlined. Every time you have to teach this game, you're like, all right, just hang with me here. It's an easy game. So they must listen to the podcast because finally this gets a streamlined 2.0 version with a better map and I will actually finally buy it. All right. Yeah, me too. Probably. <laughs> Seventh Citadel is the sequel to Seventh Continent. It is solo or cooperative. Choose your own adventure style game has the same saving features that the original did it'll probably end up on my shelf like the first game unplayed for many many months it will definitely not end up on my shelf like the other game <laughs> yeah i can see that teotuacan shadows of Z zitli come on guys what are you doing to me <laughs> oh i know i'm saying that wrong i'm sorry Two new technology tiles new starting tiles this looks to be like a small um kind of contained expansion but it's an expansion for Teotihuacan so I'm in I think they're just going to constantly put these little expansions just to mess with you Anthony I think that's the only reason why they do it just call it something easy <laughs> come on okay uh Frost Haven we already talked about this a little bit this is the full sequel to Gloomhaven um there's a ton of information out there and they they're going to seemingly do a lot of new things with it but this one's coming to Kickstarter sometime in the next few months and it is going to be presumably a ton of content from what I heard and from what you know, I've seen at least, this looks to be better than Gloomhaven, which is shocking to say. But I also still wonder if anyone's going to be picking this up in large numbers since Gloomhaven and its expansion are still hanging around at most people's tables and they haven't finished this up. So I'll be interested in see how well this one actually does sell. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure it'll sell well. But like, is it the mega hit that the first one was? True. Um, Viscounts of the West Kingdom is the third in the West Kingdom trilogy from uh. Shen Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had Architects, which was fine, and then kind of fell off. Paladins was good, but not great. Viscounts, if it follows the same upward trajectory, hopefully is great, great, right? <laughs> Basing that off nothing. I don't know if it's any good or not. Same artwork, same basic kind of functionality in terms of how the game plays. Um, the mechanics don't list worker placement anywhere, so I'm interested about that. It's sure. got Rondell and set collection in there, a little bit of variable player powers. But it seems like you're just doing the same kind of stuff. You're building stuff, you're writing manuscripts, you're working in the castle, you're trying to complete different deeds. So we shall see. Yay, another one of these. 
they're never going to stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, next one on the list is Chronicles of Crime, a millennium. So Chronicles of Crime was one of the most interesting, unique types of games uh, released last year. Not last year, the year before, 2018. This is a new take on that uh, with some older... Uh, so Chronicles of Crime was like more modern stuff. This is like 13th century, going way back. Um, then some more contemporary and then some future stuff as well. So and they've also talked about making some different standalone uh, content for um, uh, different types of things. Like they have like the dice tower promos, we're going to build certain like scenarios for that and everything else. So they're putting more content together for this, similar to how uh, time stories did. Yeah. I'm glad about this. I mean, it didn't need more content. This is a one and done kind of situation. So much, much needed. Absolutely. Uh, Root, the Underworld expansion. This introduces two new expan- or two new factions to the game, the Underground Duchy and the Corvid Conspiracy. So as you'd imagine, the Underground Duchy is kind of the a bigger, stronger one, like the Marquis and the Airy dynasties. And the Corvid Conspiracy is a more secretive faction that is trying to mess with people. Uh, two new maps come with this as well. It should be shipping pretty soon because the kickstarter was several months ago yeah looking forward to anything more root is always a good good thing uh clinic from albin viard uh this was on kickstarter a few months ago as well um albin viard's games have always been like those undersung uh gems for me like tramways is one of my favorite games uh town center is really good uh all these card city xls fantastic clinic i'd never played but this is a new deluxe edition with an expansion built in f- with artwork by ian o'toole so this has a chance hopefully to kind of break out a little bit yeah this was another game from kickstarter that was just a little bit too high for me to back but was a game that like you mentioned anthony all his games have been great and unsung masterpieces so hopefully again that great friend of mine will actually let me uh join him at the table <laughs> it's telling me it's got to come to pittsburgh kanban ev this is the classic well modern classic i should say vital lacerda game about car production but with a twist now you're making electric vehicles it is of course an eagle griffin deluxe game it is artwork by ian o'toole so it is going to be big sprawling and a hundred dollars but it will be in my collection by the end of the year i guarantee <laughs> this pre-order starts on january 22nd They already have some basic pictures up of the components and some of the map sections and things like that. I've never had a chance to play Kanban. Every time I get close to it, something kind of pops up. But yeah, I think this one's going to enter my collection as well. Burgle Brothers 2, The Casino Capers. Uh, This is the sequel to Burgle Brothers, of course, from Tim Fowers and co-designer now Jeff Krause. Uh, Burgle Brothers, if you haven't played it, is a cooperative game in which you play criminals kind of sneaking around trying to evade uh, guards and escape with the loot that you captured. This is a new one in that uh, vein with a few tweaks and updates. And now you're robbing a casino because of course you are. What's a heist without a casino robbery? Yeah, I really enjoyed Burgle Brothers. It doesn't get any kind of table time these days, but uh, always glad to see the fantastic artwork and gameplay at the table again. All right. Uh, Obsession, Upstairs, Downstairs. This was an expansion to Obsession, which uh, from Dan Halligan, which was one of our favorite games of PAX from two years ago. This expansion adds new servants, um, adds a fifth player, adds a new family, um, also adds some new service and improvement tiles, as well as a few tweaks and updates to the original content of the game. I'm just excited because hopefully this means I can get this to the table more because it won't be this old stale game that nobody's heard of. They're like, no, this just came out. You got to play because <laughs> it is it is one of my favorites, but it doesn't hit the table enough. Yeah, I backed this on Kickstarter. Um, really great production here. Great mechanics. And uh, I'm sure I'll get more da- table time. All right. Anachrony Fractures of Time. So this is the first like full separate expansion for Anachrony. There was one that came with the initial Kickstarter from two or three years ago. This one adds a whole bunch of new stuff. I'm not going to run through all of it because there's just a lot of content here. And it's a Mind Clash game and we could spend 20 minutes talking about whatever nonsense <laughs> like lore they jammed into this game. I did back this. I'm waiting for my Infinity Box to jam <laughs> everything in. And yeah, Anachrony is fantastic. It's one of the better worker placement games out there and I'm looking forward to more stuff for it. Again, another amazing imaginative game, but it, it's just kind of been a little bit overwrought for me. So I'm probably going to skip this expansion. All right, Rococo Deluxe Edition. We talked about this last week a little bit. I think it's okay. You think it's great. 
right? <laughs> yes, and I'm going to back this. You know, it's it's hard because you have the original edition and they're like, hey, this game's got some tweaks to it. And you're like, ah, tweaks. I like tweaks. And Ian O'Toole artwork, which is just like, oh, all right, fine, I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that actually might push me over the edge, if nothing else. Um, but what are you going to do? Uh, all right, next up, Return to Dark Tower. This is, they mentioned this two, maybe three years ago, Restoration Games. But now it is actually coming. Rob Davio is involved as long as well as Isaac Childress and like half a dozen other people. Uh, I did not get a chance to see this at PAX, but I know a lot of people did. So it's exciting. Yeah, little plastic uh, white skulls coming out of the Dark Tower. And it actually has a lot of movement on its own. And Isaac Childress on top of which, yeah, I'm probably going to be backing this because... You know, I remember this back in the day, and I mean, nothing's going to replace that, but if it's good and it actually has a game to it, oh yeah, I'm all in. Absolutely. All right, uh, next up is Welcome to New Las Vegas. This is the sequel to Welcome to Your New Home, and I don't know much about it, but I know you had a chance to at least take a look at it at PAX, right? Yeah, I actually got a full playthrough. You know, if you like Welcome to, but you felt it wasn't complex enough, then New Las Vegas is going to do it for you if you liked Welcome to, and we're like, eh, that's that's okay, that's 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 a thing, you know. I, I get it, it's nice. Um, then New Las Vegas might be a little too much. I mean, there's a lot of more complex mechanics that come into it, but still, overall, a very good game. All right, Namiji is the sequel to Takedo. The basic gameplay is exactly the same. You move your guy forward. Whoever's in last place gets to move next. You there can therefore get multiple turns. Each action space on the board corresponds to a different type of action you can take. The difference here is that the actions are slightly different. There's a push your luck element. There's additional set collection elements. There's like a personal board you're working with. I thought it was really cool and a little bit different. Um, so I'm interested in it. I know some people are a little disappointed and that it didn't do enough different from Takedo, but I'm still excited to see this when it comes out. I really enjoyed the production of this. I played it PAX Unplugged, but for me, it actually, in fact, didn't do enough differently. And I have the super fancy edition for Takedo. So, you know, I didn't think I would say this, but I'm actually going to pass on this one. All right. And then last but not least, we have Spirit Island Jagged Earth. This was a really long Kickstarter campaign, ran back in 2018, I think, end of the year. And it should be shipping this year. Has new scenarios, eight new spirits, new adversaries, new island boards, new events, um, new major minor power, just new everything thrown in here. And for one of the best games of the last 10 years and probably what I would say is the best co-op game period, um, at least for heavy gamers, this is very welcome news. Lots of new content for spirit Island. is not a bad thing. Yeah. This was my number one game two years ago. And the problem with spirit Island and its expansions is you do need some guide to kind of go through and see which, you know, spirits kind of work best together and how to work with them because it is a very long and involved game and it could put you in a situation where you won't win from the very beginning. So I really would like to see a full deluxe version of this where things are tweaked. And I guess we're in that situation now where things are being re-released and tweaked such a way that uh, maybe you don't have to back the game when it first comes out because maybe there's a better version down the line, which is very, very strange to say. But, uh, you know, there's some changes in our industry and, uh, you know, there's something new each and every time. So, Anthony, is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to as being most anticipated for the expansions and the re-releases? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the Root expansion in particular, which I know is coming real soon, but that's probably near the top of my list because uh, I just want to try those new factions. I'm actually really excited for Kemet 2.0, even though I don't own the original, because same reasons you said, I just never bought it. It had a lot of issues. Sure. The lack. The expansion content's kind of necessary. I didn't want to pile it together. So that one's definitely one I'm going to pick up as well because that's one of my favorite dudes in a map games. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Kanban v EV edition. Uh, Kanban's been around for quite some time, so I think that's something that I really like to try out and get to the table, and especially with Ian O'Toole's artwork here. I think it's going to have some staying power going forward. And Obsession, Upstairs, Downstairs, was a Kickstarter that I backed that I'm looking forward to get to the table because... It was a really good game, but it was a little clunky when you had to teach. So if they're able to streamline a couple of those things, I think it's going to make a major impression at the table. 
All right, everyone. So that's everything for this week. Until next time, this is Chris. And this is Anthony. And we'll save you all a seat at the table. <laughs> <laughs>